Hi, I'm Oblissi. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, I appreciate a like, comment, sub, and little bell notification. Thanks so much, enjoy. Hey everyone, um, this is sort of a special, long, and maybe a little weirdish type of video. Um, it's a video documenting the breeding and EV training process for a team I made for DPPOU. Um, if you remember, a little while ago I battled Green Darkness. I did a, a live where I showed me battling him twice. There's actually a third battle that happened before those two. Um, featuring a team I completely EV train and bred from scratch. Uh, myself in my uh, Soul Silver version. Um, Diamond Pearl Platinum is, and you know, by extension, Heart Gold Soul Silver is when I got into competitive Pokemon, and they're games that mean a lot to me. And so I wanted to completely breed a team from scratch for this. And this whole video is going to be showing clips in in various ways. The first section is going to be uh, like sped up footage of me breeding them, but then I have like a more vloggy style situation where I show me EV training them in various ways and talking about that. So this is going to be me talking about that whole process, um, you know, either live or in post recording, and then the battle is going to be at the end of it. And it's going to be a really long video, so I understand if you don't want to watch all of it. Um, so I'm going to have a bunch of timestamps and stuff all down in the description and in the pinned comments. Um, this really meant a lot to me. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I hope this is enjoyable to you guys. And um, that's all I have to say. So I love Diamond Pearl Platinum uh, Wi-Fi and Overuse. And I hope you enjoy this video. So in this part of the video, I'm just going to be showing uh, not the breeding process, but me actually breeding uh, all of these Pokemon here. Um, this is, with the exception of the uh, Larvitar, who is from my um, Emerald version, who I actually, you can see me breed that Larvitar in the How to Get Perfect IVs and a Shiny Pokemon Easy from Emerald Eggs. It's the same one, which I think is funny. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the research I did for the team, or not in this video, but in this section, just where you're seeing me breed all the Pokemon. Um, you're going to see me, uh, I'm going to discuss what, why I picked the Pokemon I did, how I learned, uh, what I wanted to do, etc, etc. I mean, so we're going to start with the first Pokemon here, it's going to be the Bronzor. Um, Trick Room's one of my favorite playstyles in Sun and Moon. And I knew I didn't want to run full Trick Room, uh, because it's a very committal style, and I wanted to be able to win with this team, and because I knew it was going to only be one battle, and, um, you know, Trick Room on the ladder, sometimes you're just going to insta-lose or insta-win, and I didn't want that kind of, uh, situation here, but I did want to run some Trick Room on my team. And so, uh, I was doing a lot of research in Smogon's Ruin of Alf Threads, I was doing a lot of research, um, I watched a great video by PDC called Postmodern DPP. Um, which explained teams and archetypes and stuff like that. And so I came to the conclusion I wanted to run CBT TAR, especially because of the Latias Unban, uh, and I wanted to pair that with an offensive Trick Room Bronzong. Uh, the Bronzong would be holding a Macho Brace to increase Gyro Ball's damage, and it would run Earthquake, Trick Room, and Explosion, and it would be the only Trick Roomer. And the T-Tar would not run max speed, and so it would pair fairly well with this Bronzor here, or the, to be a Bronzong. Um, and so what I do here in this uh, section is I show all of them hatching as shinies for the first time, then I show the second part where I RNG the IVs. Um, and so for the Bronzong, I made sure the uh, speed was zero, and I had a, uh, I believe it's Brave Nature, which lowers speed and increases attack, and uh, um, again, Macho Brace lowers speed even more, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, aside from that, I was trying to think of other team members that would pair well with my uh, squad. So, I wanted a few different things here. So, immediately I realized I was Infernape weak. Bronzong and Tyranitar were both pretty weak to Infernape. Um, and so I decided, okay, I need things that are faster than Infernape. I need things that can take hits from it. And uh, I also wanted some momentum. And so, the first thing that came to mind in terms of momentum and being faster was a Flygon. Um, I decided to go with Trostar Flygon. It's one of the most, I wouldn't say versatile mons, um, but what I would say is it's a, like, it's just such a good pivot. You can retain momentum with it, like, a huge amount. All you have to do is click that U-turn, um, and uh, it does a, just a whole bunch of damage, um, and it's faster than, like, the entire unboosted meta. So, I would say it's a pretty good Pokemon, um, and it, it served sort of as a check to, um, 
If it remained at full health, it served as sort of a check to DD Dragonite, um, which is kind of a threat. Um, and so here is my little shiny, uh, little shiny trip pinch hatching now. Um, and so the the set on Flygon I wanted to just be standard, Jolly, Max Speed, Max Special Attack, or not Max Special Attack, Max Attack. Although Special Attack is doable, it's just a little bit weaker. Like you could run, uh, you know, Draco and Fire Blast, and I, I think I still chose to run Fire Blast on this Flygon just for Skarmory. Um, and so, uh, the Titar and the, um, uh, Bronzong I paired with this again because it's a good pivot and it's faster than a lot of things. Um, up next I was really trying to think what would be a good idea, um, like what else would be good for this squad here, and I sort of came to the conclusion that I think a, I need a Starmie on this team. I was not particularly Rocks weak, however, I thought Starmie's uh, stabs were both really, really good, and um, if I went with the bold Starmie, um, it would actually outslow things under potential Trick Room situations that it normally wouldn't. So I went with like a defensive bold Starmie. Um, this would help with the Infernape weakness situation that I was, uh, for some reason, very paranoid about. Um, it would help with that, and also it would, like for example, it would be slower than base 100s under Trick Room. and. You know, uh, even though it wouldn't have that much special attack investment, a starmy um, hydro pump, like a stab hydro pump coming off this thing is not going to be the easiest thing to deal with, I would say. And so that's why I chose to uh, pick uh, uh, Starmy as one of my team members. Um, so up next is going to be um, the. Uh, the IV portion for the star me, or the star you. Um, I chose to do all the uh, uh, IVs max. Uh, my attack also didn't matter because um, there's no foul play in this generation, so I didn't even have to keep that into consideration. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to mention this uh, before. Um, one of the cooler things about this whole team uh, situation is that a few of these Pokemon are bred from... Actually, I think three of them are bred from... Uh, old Pokemon I've had that like don't have perfect dive like they have two perfect IVs or three maybe if I'm lucky like Infernape um, because I bred them in like with a friend of mine in like 2008 and their stats are garbage like besides the ones that they specifically really really needed so the Bronzong the Trapinch and the Infernape are all definitely like bred down from like old Pokemon I really really used to have which I I don't know I think it's cool personally. Um, it's just something that made the team mean even a little bit more to me, I would say. Um, I couldn't I couldn't see who that was uh, coming up, um, so we'll, we'll wait to see. Oh, I also wanted to make every single team member shiny just for uh, fun. Um, I thought that would be a fun thing to do, just show off how good RNG abuse is and can be. Um, and some of these Pokemon I was having a bit of trouble with, but uh, I figured it out eventually. It was just taking a while. I'm not really sure why, but it just was taking like me... I don't know, I just wasn't clicking with it for some reason here. Um, and so, I believe this might be the uh, Chimchar, um, because I chose to go with an Infernape. Oh, it's a Shroomish, right, right. So I chose to go with Shroomish here, um, because A, Shroomish isn't particularly fast and can probably work okay in Trick Room, uh, and B, it's I think it's one of the most ridiculous broken Pokemon in this meta. It's like, it, it's like a very good wall breaker, um, Spore is really, really good, um, and it just can put out a bunch of damage. And so, I think it was just a natural fit for the team. Um, I like the Fire, Water, Grass core so, uh, as well. So, for my uh, Fire, I chose Infernape, who you're going to be seeing here. Um, grass, I chose Breloom. I think it's the best Grass type in the tier. And Water, I chose Starmie. Although, Starmie easily um, could have been a Milotic or something along those lines. So, yeah. Uh, here comes the Chimchar. Uh, Infernape, uh, I wanted an offensive Rocks setter. And I didn't want... Uh, I couldn't easily access Heatran. <laughs> was basically uh, part of the reason for Infernape. But also I thought another U-Turner would be really, really nice. Um, we have Flygon, and having two U-Turners on a DPP team is actually extremely strong. I was considering Gliscor for a while as well, for this, uh, for similar reason. Um, and here you just see that all its stats are perfect. And um, that's it for this portion of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and you'll see me importing the T-Tar now. So I'm rec um, importing Pokemon from my uh, Emerald version here. Um, don't have the most time, I'll say. 
So uh, that's why I'm importing. Let me just do a bunch of cacneo. Um, I'm importing from Emerald because I, I already have a Larvitar bred, um, and so that's why I will be doing that. I'll go catch him, and I'll be EV training that Larvitar. Um, I only have a few more Pokemon uh, to make for this team, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's all I can think of for now. Book one, about to get murdered. Not by the bronze though. And I'm getting bronze ore swole with some protein. Giving him some good shakes before we go out and kill a bunch of goldines. Murdering goldines on Route 25. Take Goldine! <laughs> All right, uh, on to the next mon. We have my Trapinch here that I bred. He's about to get roided out. Just doing standard, uh, um, standard flag on, max attack, max speed. Maybe four HP or defense, not sure yet. Um, it's the morning before work, so I'm just Show in before I have to leave. Second Goldeen, I forgot to film the first one because I am an idiot. But yeah, you gotta do switch training on these things. Uh, personally, I think the switch training is faster than doing EXP share without the power item. Uh, switch. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I do. I, I do the switch training uh, with Poke RS <laughs> and the power item. Okay. Sprout Tower, Rattata Murders. I actually think this guy might be able to do it himself. Oh yeah. So I won't even have to do switch training it looks like. to. Uh, to this is the first time I won't have to do it. Oof, training time for the Shroomish. Um, it's getting some protein now. So he's gonna get 10 proteins. And he's gonna get 10. Um, uh, wow. 10 proteins, uh, 10, uh, whatever speed is, I think it's, uh, Carbos, and then he's getting 1 HP up. Uh, he's gonna have 12 HP, 252 attack, 244 speed, with an adamant, or she, excuse me, with an adamant nature. Um, yeah, that's basically to outspeed neutral base 100s, um, I didn't think Jolly was too important, I don't think DPP's speed tier is too high outside of a few instances, so we'll see. So this is kind of an interesting thing about um, DPP. Um, I think you have to kind of plan your EV training out a little better. So as you can see, my Shroomish was holding a power anklet and I was just killing Rattatas and uh, Bellsprout Tower or whatever. Um, however, I want 244. Normally I would have to kill uh, 16 to do 244, or to do 252 to do your usual max out speed thing, um, but because of the way it works, I have to take the, I have to kill 14 after doing a uh, hundred, they're like 10 carbos, and that'll get me 240, and to get to 244, I'm going to remove the power anklet, and then kill two Rattatas, uh, so <laughs> I actually have to kill the same amount of Rattatas I would normally, but to get less EVs, um, so it's pretty interesting. Um, I think it's Sun and Moon because of how streamlined it tends to be, uh, and it's done usually differently. I actually think I'll be able to kill this Rattata on my own, so that'll be fun. And alright, that's that. So I'm on my first Goldeen for Shroomish. One of the nicer things though is that um, I'm strong enough where Seed Bomb will just be able to uh, K 
KO with these Goldines, no problem, so I won't have to do any swap training, which is uh, pretty nice, I think. So Larvitar is the one being trained right now. Um, after I just finished up, uh, what's his face? Uh, the... Oh boy, can't remember the name. Breloom. Um, Breloom Titar, pretty classic core. Um, this guy had some EVs in him already, um, so... It's gonna be weird. The HPs, I believe I need, are... I need 10 of these, and then... Scooch. Uh, and then I'm going to also need... Um, 7 Carbos. He's only gonna get... He's actually only gonna get 72 speed. And so what I might do is, you can use, uh, yeah. Um, so I'll probably do HP training first, uh, because I'm going to only need, like, a few points of those, and uh, then we'll figure out, and we'll just maximize his attack, and we'll move on from there. Alright, time to do the star me, or is it to star you right now? Um, it needs to get 10 HP ups. Uh, where are you? Does this stay on the star mirror? Do it? No, it doesn't work. So it's gotta get. I'm doing, um. It's kind of a lazier, cheesier set, I would guess, but it's the bold star me with, um. You know, not max defense, but max HP, near max defense, and very little speed investment. Um, so it's gonna get the max HP treatment here. It's gonna get a hundred of that, and then I'll do slowpoke well grinds. Then uh, do a hundred, or I'll, I'll do all of the vit the vitamins, and then uh, after that, it's gonna be slowpokes. Um, however, I fight for defense. I don't think I've even done any defense yet. Maybe like geodudes or something. And uh, yeah, I'll do the carbos now because they're important. Anyway, that's it for Starmy, and I'll uh, cut to doing some of the training. Starmy comes out to do the HP training. This is supposed to be more like vloggy style, but I'm not really good at it. Um, I basically have just gotten off of work. Um, and I'm watching Leffen discuss his thoughts on banning wobbling in Melee. So that's fine. Um, I'm exhausted and I have to go to bed early tonight, but <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to get the star, uh, the star you done with its EV training. And uh, yeah, that's that. Bye. Watching Gramp game game Grumpus while uh, killing Sidex for my special attack stat. It's gonna be a lead in for Nate. Nothing too exciting here, I think. <laughs> About to evolve my Bronzor. I think he evolves this level. There he is. My beautiful green boy. Er, gender neutral. Non-binary. Whatever. After a few Elite Four runs, um, Jewel is, was level 38, so I'm just gonna jump Jewel up to 45. Uh, Oops. Don't want to forget any moves for Screech. Um, and so hopefully we'll get to see my shiny Flygon in uh, a few seconds. Uh, after that, I'm probably going to be putting Star... I, so I have two EXP shares. I have one from Mr. Pokemon gives it to you. Uh, if you have that, you give him the red scale. And the other one is... Um, from the lottery. So I have two EXP shares. Oh, there's Jewel. So I have a Flygon. Um, so yeah, I'll use the other EXP share probably on my Staryu. Pretty cool. And that's that. So more Leaf 4 runs would be. <clears throat> okay. Uh...
Oh, yes. Oof. Oh boy. Give a scratch for that. Oof. Only a few more Pokemon to evolve. Should be the final level for Shroomish as well. <laughs> and again, it's level 45, so it can learn Spore because Breloom doesn't learn Spore. Yes. The Star is even worse. You can finally evolve into a fighting type. I learned recently that the reason Breloom learns all of its punching moves is because its arms stretch like elastic bands. I thought it had T-Rex arms. And it does, but they like stretch out like Piccolo in Dragon Ball Z. There you go. Alright. Starmie should be almost done. Alright, it should learn Hydro Pump right now. That's why I had to get to level 55. Yeah. Oh yes, I need a stone frame to evolve actually. Oops. Well, you'll see Hydro Pump. There you go. Alright. Pibitar should evolve. So actually, interestingly enough, I thought it would lose its Japanese name. It hasn't. But what's actually happened is for some reason, it's kept the Japanese name of Larvitar. So that says like, uh, I think Yukilasu or, or Yukilasu. Uh, that's just like Larvitar's name in Japanese. Uh, and it's never changed for some reason, so I don't know what's up with that. So now I have a Tyranitar that is named Larvitar. But in Japanese. So this is the dude who gives me Explosion. <laughs> it's, uh... I believe if I give him this Rage Candy Bar, he'll give me a TM Explosion. I actually don't know if I've, like, ever been down here in Hard Cold Soul Silver, because you don't need to. Like, I don't recognize it at all. It's so crazy. This guy's... Oh my god, guys. Guys. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's very scary. Um, yeah. That's explosion. What's going on, Bronzong, baby? Alright. <clears throat> After spending quite a bit of time getting moves for certain Pokémon and, and, you know, grinding, um, Pokéathlon to do some stuff, Tom is going to be evolving. Um, this is the last evolution I have. Boom. Very beautiful. Sort of the same color, maybe a bit plain, but you know, it's still nice. Um, that's all the evolutions for now. I don't know if I have any more moves to show me getting, because it's, it's some bog standard stuff. Like a second copy of U-Turn by playing Voltorb Flip, uh, or Substitute, or no, it's not U-Turn from, U-Turn's from the Battle Frontier I have to get. I think Substitute and Thunderbolt, no, I didn't even need Thunderbolt from Voltorb Flip, but I was considering getting it that way, so, uh, we'll see. Okay, so before the uh, battle begins, I want to go over my team in its entirety, explain the full process of all of the members, why I picked them, uh, why I bred them, why I named them what I named them. Uh, just to show you the full, you know, f full effort of my team. So, um, this is CPU Jano J19, my Bronzong. Uh, he was bred from the old Bronzong I, I used to have back in 2008. Also, same name, um, but it wasn't shiny. I mean, that Bronzong was just a standard defensive Bronzong. Um, as I said in the earlier part of this video, Trick Room is one of my favorite archetypes. I think it's really fun. It's typically not as good in singles, and it's usually kind of like a ride or die situation. So I didn't want to run a full Trick Room team, um, but I did want to run Offensive Trick Room Bronzong. I think it's a really cool set. Offensive Bronzong is pretty cool. Um, so the set is Earthquake, Gyro Ball, Explosion, Trick Room. Um, it's got, uh, I believe it's 252 HP and attack, and then the rest is in one of the defenses. I can't recall which. Um, Brave Nature to slow the speed even more to increase 
uh, its speed under Trick Room and Gyro Ball's power. And then levit uh, Levitate, so I have a ground immunity, and Macho Brace to do the same. And I think one of the cool things about Bronzong is it's fairly uh, bulky, so it can actually switch into a lot of different neutral attacks. Um, and he was the first member of the core. Now, this was a core I found on um, uh, um, the Ruins of Alf Smogon threads, talking about interesting DPP OU cores. And so the next member of that core was Tyranitar, a choice band set. So this Tyranitar, um, I believe, has max attack, 70 speed, and then the rest is dropped in HP. So it's uh, fairly bulky for a choice band Tyranitar. Um, and the reason I wanted this was uh, several fold, I'd say. Um, so one, this means Tyranitar is actually fairly, uh, is going to function fairly well in Trick Room, um, just because of the, the low speed setting. And then the rest is just an incredibly powerful breaker. Crunch, Earthquake, and Stone Edge are all just your standard T-Tar coverage. It's going to be doing massive damage. Uh, and it will live a bunch of random water or psychic Pokemon attacks. As long as it doesn't have fighting coverage, Titar will actually probably live it from full anyway. And then Pursuit is to Pursuit Trap any of the psychic types, basically, or any super frail Pokemon. Um, I was a little bit scared of Latias, uh, even though Bronzong could probably take it. So uh, this core really complements each other fairly well, and uh, they were the basis of the whole team. So, next up is uh, Breloom. Oh, and I forgot. Uh, its name, it doesn't get a nickname. I forgot to change its nickname before trading it up. But, for some reason, it kept the Japanese name of Larvitar. Not really sure why. Usually, they change when they evolve, but it, this is actually just Larvitar, but in Japanese. Amanita. Um, so, this is a Breloom. I think Breloom is one of the best Pokemon in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, uh, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver metagame. Um, it's got... 244 speed, like the re uh, max attack, and then the rest in HP with an adamant nature. Um, I'm thinking maybe Jolly or even like a way bulky Breloom set would have been better uh, after using this thing because it was so frail, but you know, you live and learn. <laughs> um, so Spore is just one of the best moves in the game, and Grass type Pokemon are not immune to it yet. That's a Gen 6 thing, so this guy is going to Spore, or this girl is going to Spore anything on the planet. Uh, sub Punch, because once you Spore, you can just Sub, is just incredibly devastating in terms of its power. And Seed Bomb, just for your grass coverage. Poison Heal is a really good ability, allows me to do some minor stalling if I have to. Um, the Speed Investment will let me outspeed the slow Pokemon, I normally wouldn't. Um, and Adamant for the power, because uh, uh, Jolly... I mean, Jolly probably would have been better now that I'm thinking about it, because of the Focus Punch's insane amount of power, but again, it's you can't do too much. Um, and so, one of the reasons I really like uh, Breloom, especially in conjunction with Tyranitar, is these two make stall teams, or any amount of stall, or any, like, large defensive cores, very difficult to pull off. So, even if you're not running full stall, you're running balance, this plus Tyranitar is going to just, just completely demolish whatever walls you have. Even physical walls really can't take what Breloom has to dish out, especially in conjunction with the choice band Tyranitar. Um, so... Uh, I really love that, um, and then so now that I have Breloom going, uh, I kind of wanted to get s and the rest of my team going, and also Breloom, uh, by the way, since DPP can be a fairly quick meta at times, um, he actually also does okay under Trick Room despite the speed investment, uh, or she, excuse me, um, and the name is Amanita, it's a type of red mushroom, uh, just coloration wise, uh, but also, he was a cool, ice uh, Fly Amanito was a cool Ice Climbers player from uh, Melee back in the day. He hasn't played in a long time, but he was cool. Uh, next up is Jewel, the Flygon. Um, it's just your standard Choice uh, choice Scarf Flygon, Outrage EQ U-Turn for the physical coverage, damage, and pivot ability, and Fire Blast to hit a potential Steel type like Skarmory or Magnus, or it wouldn't be Magnus, but, you know, a potential Steel type um, that would try to wall this Dragon Boy. Dragon Girl. <laughs> I think most of them are girls. Um, Jolly Nature, because if you're Scarfing, you're going to go max speed. Uh, Levitate, because it's the only ability. And Choice Scarf, again, I wanted a quick offensive pivot. Um, and this thing could actually function okay as a lead as well. Um, the name is Jewel. Um, uh, I couldn't think of a nickname for a Flygon, and I asked my girlfriend, uh, hey, what's a good nickname for this shiny Pokemon? And we looked up a picture of Shiny Flygon, and it made her think of, like, literal jewels. Um... Uh, the EV spread is just your standard uh, max attack, max speed for defense. 
Up next is Starmie. So I had a Breloom, and I wanted a Firewater Grass Core. Um, and so I was looking at which water Pokemon would be good, and I realized my team was actually fairly weak to Infernape. Um, so I wanted some Pokemon that could deal with Infernape pretty well. And uh, I was even a little bit scared of the Pivot uh, potential from Infernape um, in that of U-Turn. So I went with a bold Starmie that is, you know, max HP, 200 defense, the rest in special attack, I believe is the spread. Um, so it's actually a fairly slow Starmie, and it's fairly bulky. Um, with Hydro Pump, Rapid Spin, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. I actually should have dropped Rapid Spin for um, for Psychic, I think, before the battle. The the Rapid Spin does not matter on this team. This team is not Rocks weak. I have three Pokemon that resist Rocks, and then everyone else is neutral. Um, and I do have a small Pivoting Core with my last Pokemon, but still... Yeah. Uh, you go uh, you go natural cure because I don't think it has analytic in this generation and eliminate literally doesn't do anything in battle. Um, it's gonna get lefties, um, so this is supposed to function as sort of a bulky pivot where I can switch in, take an attack, and actually dish out a large amount of damage. Um, you have to run hydro pump on the bolt set, otherwise Starmie's actually like really really lacking in power. T bolt and ice beam are basically just for four times weak Pokemon, um, <laughs> or just like you know hit super effective on the switch and then get the heck out of there. Uh, if you don't feel like pulling a double or risking for a double. Um, and Rapid Spin is just to remove rocks and uh, spikes and stuff. Um, which, maybe on, like, Showdown, where Stall is a more prevalent uh, potential, when you're not, like, playing friends or whatever, Rapid Spin would actually be valuable to remove, like, spikes, toxic spikes, etc., etc. Uh, however, um, I don't necessarily believe that it's as valuable, especially if you're playing a friend who's probably not going to be hazard stagging, so. Um, it was, it, 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 yeah, so we'll see. Um, and then the last member of the team was Infernape. So to complete the Firewater Grass Core, I wanted a, um, I wanted a fire type that was fairly quick that could U-turn along with Flygon. So I wanted at least two U-turners to get sort of a Volt Turn situation coming in uh, similarly. And I wanted to go with Mix Ape. Um, my only special attacker at this point was um, Flygon. Um, so, well, or not Flygon, excuse me. My only special attackers were Fire Blast on Flygon, Starmie, who wasn't fully invested in special attack, and now this Infernape. Um, so Infernape's nice because it's my offensive rocker and it's a mixed attacker. It runs 192 speed because you only need to outspeed you don't, you, because your speed, Infernape speed tier in Diamond Pearl Platinum is fairly unique, so you only need to run a specific amount of speed uh, to outspeed base 100s, and I think a little bit more than that, but that's it. Um, and so I guess if another Infernape's running max speed, you could lose that speed tie, but it's not really worth it, uh, in my opinion. And so then I run max special attack and the rest into uh, attack, and uh, I'm running Stealth Rock, so this could be my offensive Stealth Rocker. Um, Close combat just for the, you know, Chansey and Clefable basically, and Fire Blast to be dishing out some pretty big damage with the Life Orb. Um, and Naive Nature so I don't lower any of these stats. Oh, I forgot to explain to then I'll go back and explain Starmie's nickname. Um, Infernape's nickname is Petra, which is a female variant of the name Peter. Uh, my friend Pete. Uh, it's a big inside joke about gorilla noises. Um... <laughs> Uh, we, let's just say we like to make gorilla noises. Oh, oops. And, uh, so for the, um, Starmie, its name is Tom. Uh, a good friend of mine back from Diamond Pearl Platinum, uh, meta. You can actually still find his YouTube channel if you want to find Dude1991. Uh, his name was Tom. He hated Starmie. Um, that's basically it. Um, and, uh, I believe that's my whole team. You guys have seen everyone. I've explained all of their EV spreads and their purposes, so I hope you enjoy watching this Into the Battle. Um, and uh, onwards to the battle, that's all I can say. Okay, so we finally have the battle here. Um, so I lead off with Flygon. Flygon was my best lead Pokemon because it could U-turn out uh, on its Scarf. It'll probably be faster than most of the unboosted meta. Um, and he leads with them a champ. And I quickly realize I have actually no way to deal with this thing. Um, Dynamic Punch is a giant threat. So I, gold out, I go out into my bold uh, Starmie. And unfortunately... Uh, he paybacks immediately. Um, and if this was max attack, then uh, I'm pretty sure this was a guaranteed Oko, even with critical hit. 
Um, I thought I always lived, but I think, uh, when this happened I thought I always lived, but I think I mixed up the mechanics of later games where uh, payback won't work if you, won't do double damage if it's just a switch in. So anyway, here, um, I go into Breloom because I want to check for, um, uh, dynamic, or I want to try and waste dynamic punches if I could possibly do that and check for Ice Punch for the Flygon. So I sub again here and I think he comes to realize that's not a great idea to, um, continue dynamic punching and so I figure alright this is my best bet um, I know this thing is a lumberry all lead machamps have lumberry to deal with uh, you know spore leads or sleep powder leads etc so I go into my infernape on the ice punch and I basically just have to sack infernape who is my rocker um, to completely like just to die basically I have to sack infernape to um, do a bunch of damage to the machamp like I know I knew I wouldn't kill there was no chance in hell that I killed. Um, and so there goes Infernape. Uh, rest in pepperonis, Petra. Um, so my next best bring in here, um, it was kind of tough, um, but I decided on Breloom being the best bet here. Um, Breloom I knew would be faster than it, and um, that's basically it. Like I wouldn't have to lock myself in um, to anything. Uh, so he goes into this Jirachi, which I fear could be Choice Scarf, and even if it's not Scarf, it will be faster than me. Uh, so I know a U-turn could be coming, um, however he chooses not to U-turn. It seems to be a special set, which is sort of weird, maybe it's CM. So I go into Bronzong, and he goes into Metagross as I get my Trick Room off. Um, so uh, this is this was one of this was basically the Pokemon the team was built around. It was this um, it was this and a um, CBT Tart were my core. And so this Pokemon is going to do massive, massive damage under Trick Room. Um, so I Earthquake again. You know, you never know what he's going to have. Um, you would assume he's got a Ground Resist, but I had no reason to suspect he would switch. Um, I kind of just play into his hands here. Uh, you know, when you first uh, start the match, you don't know how someone's going to be playing. So he switches back into Metagross. Um, and here I Earthquake again, predicting he won't switch this time. Um, this was because I thought maybe he was thinking like he'd be in my head or I'd be in his head and there'd be too many doubles. Um, the straightforward plays uh, sometimes is just the better play. So he goes into Titar here and I know this thing will just not be able to do anything to me. Um, I mean Bantar would be able to do large amounts of damage. Uh, however, um, even if it was Bantar, I figured Trick Room plus and then an Earthquake would be pretty good because I know I have a Pokemon faster than this Titar here. Um, he chooses to switch out after the crunch doesn't do anything onto my gyro ball. Um, and so the reason I went for gyro ball over Earthquake was not only because of how slow Bronzong was, but because of the Macho Brace item which it uses, which lowers its speed. So here, um, I, I think I gyro ball expecting the Dragonite to come in this time. Um, based on how he's playing, he would go into a Steel type to bait my gyro ball, so I thought it best to gyro ball here. Um, now here, I think my play would always just be to Gyro Ball again. Uh, it would do decent damage to a Jirachi who has base 100 speed, and um, uh, and it would kill the Titar. So the Jirachi was the only other possible switch in. Uh, he extreme speeded there, kind of just sacking the Dragonite. Um, so I think I have one more turn of Trick Room left. Bronzong just like clean swept four or three members of his Pokemon and is about to take the fourth one out. Uh, Explosion is really cool play here. Um, I was slightly worried about uh, Protect Suicune, however, uh, he appeared to not be that, so that was super cool. I bet he thought um, he a Gyro Ball, EQ, and then some other attack, like Zen Headbutt or something maybe, and Suicune would have taken any of those. Uh, but I go down with an Explosion, which is super nice, right as Trick Room ends, so I can get in my Choice Scarfer. Um, both for um, Earthquaking, what I know are his last two Earthquake Pokémon, and for Momentum, potentially. Uh, for his, uh, did I say his last two Earthquake Pokemon? But his, his last two Pokemon are weak to Earthquake. Um, and so, uh, the Strachi actually turns out to be Shookaberry, which is pretty uh, interesting. Um, I'm not too aware of that, and uh, so I know it can't kill me with the Psychic here, um, and so I'm just going to EQ again. I have no reason not to. The um, Neither the Titor nor the Strachi could take this on particularly well. And at this point, uh, the only Pokémon I have left are my Breloom, who is slower than Jirachi, and my Tyranitar, who is also extremely slow. Tyranitar has about 70-something speed because of the Trick Room situation. 
So he goes into his T-Tar and I get an EQ off. Um, and it's going to do a buttload of damage, uh, showing that this is like clearly not any kind of defensive T-Tar. Like, T-Tars are, I think, often not that squishy, so that was some intel that uh, this could be potentially Scarf, or this could be Tyranoboa, um, the mixed set. So I choose to go into um, uh, uh, Breloom here because I wanted to make sure this thing was... Um, uh, uh, like, I wanted to double check if it was Scarf or not. Because if it wasn't Scarf and I, I got, like, crit on my T-Tar or something, that wouldn't be great. Um, and so it, it he, he was faster, and uh, my Breloom's sped to outspeed this, so I know he's Scarf and Ice Beam's not going to do anything to my T-Tar. Um, I do risk the freeze here, but Ice Beam does actually so little that um, I might have been able to thaw out even if he froze me. So I think that was probably my best play. Um, and so I just EQ him for the match, and that was a really, really good game, and I hope you all enjoyed watching this whole process. Thanks so much, and have a good day.